Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to be talking you through the solo growth model because it was one of my most favorite models that I learned at university. And again, it is one of those things that I'm pretty confident no matter what university you're at, you're probably gonna cover this. So it's sort of applicable to so many people. So I'm actually gonna start it off by not going through the solo growth model. That's gonna come a little bit later. I'm actually first gonna go through um, the maths that you need a strong understanding on in order to make learning this model um, a lot easier. But to make it very applicable and to make it so you can easily just transfer this knowledge, I'm actually going to use the same letters that will be used, so the same variables that will be used in the solo growth model. So that won't take very long. That will just be the first bit. Let's go through some of the maths that you'll need to know. And then we'll head straight into the model. And I will uh, walk you through a typical sort of exam style question. Um, yeah, so I hope you enjoy the video. The first thing we need to get down is knowing the shape of graphs. So we're going to go through an example of y equals k, where obviously the power is just 1. y equals k squared, although this is any power that's greater than 1, so it could be k cubed. And then y equals k to a half, so anything where the power is greater than 0 but less than 1. So it could obviously be k to the fifth, for example. You need to know what these... Um, shape like because obviously these are the things that could be changed and if you just go and memorize the one you did in class and graph it then obviously you're going to be incorrect. So that first one when y equals k obviously it's just the power of one so it's just a linear graph so you just need to be drawing a straight line and obviously in this case it goes through the origin of zero zero. The second one, which was k squared, obviously you should know this, it's a quadratic, so it looks like the positive half of your quadratic, so it just curves upwards, um, that's k squared. And then your third graph, which is obviously to a fraction, um, sort of curves like a cave, so it's concave basically. So you need to have all of these down, so if you start to spot any of these powers, you can automatically draw them rather than just drawing the one you've done in class. Moving on to a bit of a recap of mathematical notation, I'm just going to use the example of y equals k to the half um, to illustrate this. But what you're going to see a lot, instead of writing k, you're going to see f of k. So you can write f of k equals k to the half rather than y equals k to the half. Basically, f of k is the same, of k, as, the same as y, and in this case, we're saying that y is equal to k to the half. Now a quick recap on graph transformations because something that you're going to see a lot in this model is you're going to see s f of k. So basically we're just multiplying our um, function by a number. I'm going to explain more what s f of k means later on but I'm just sort of getting the maths down for now. So let's um, use what it is used in the model. s is always between 0 and 1. I'll explain why that is later on which then means... Um, we've got a, a number that's between 0 and 1 multiplied by f of k. So, for example, let's illustrate this. Let's say that s is um, 0 0.2. This would then mean y is equal to 0 0.2k to the half, because remember, f of k is whatever y is equal to, and we've already said in this case it's k to the half. This is where knowing your um, shapes of your graph is important because we need to be able to graph this. It's just a rough sketch. So the first thing we're going to do is actually just going to graph um, f of k, which is y equals k to the half. Obviously, it's a fraction, so we know what that looks like. It looks like this. Now we want to go in and graph s f of k. Well, it's a graph transformation, right? We just have a um, number multiplied by our function. We know from GCSE maths, graph transformation, this is then a stretch in the y axis, um, but obviously because it is a fraction, it's going to be a, a, um, a lower stretch rather than an, a bigger stretch. And the last bit of maths to cover before we actually get into uh, explaining the model is this scenario where let's say we have um, two graphs. So in this case, we're going to have a curve and we're going to have a straight line. So I've called them f of k and depth. This is going to make a lot more sense once I explain the model. But basically, 
what we're trying to do is we are wanting to know at what point does the gradient of the linear line, so the depreciation line, equal the gradient of our f of k line. So the easiest way to do it is to get a ruler, um, anything with a straight line, but typically that tends to be a ruler in an exam, and you want to line it up with your straight line. So basically it sits perfectly with your straight line, because then what you're gonna do is you're gonna drag it back until it just touches the curve, and the point at which it just touches that curve is the point at which the two gradients are equal, and I've just marked it as k star for now. So moving on to explaining the actual model. So we've got the solo model. Now, the first thing we need to talk about is what is we actually trying to answer with the solo model? And it's all about countries' growth, how they grow, and ability to compare growth between countries. Okay, first we're gonna talk about the agents within the model. So these are um, the basically groups of people that this model uses. The first is households, so general population, okay? And there's two things that um, they do in our model because obviously everything is simplified. So the first thing people will do is they will consume and their equation for consuming is C equals one minus S Y. What does that mean? It means that our consumption is our income minus whatever we save because S Y means a proportion of our income. The second thing uh, people and people do is they work, so they supply labour. Moving on to our next agent in the economy, and this is firms. Now, they also have uh, two behaviours within the solo model. The first thing is that they employ people, because obviously um, there's people in our economy, and we assume that basically everybody gets employed. And the second thing they do is they produce. So in the solo model, um, because it's simplified, we say that only one good is produced, and basically this good is perishable in the sense that I can't just hold onto it, I have to consume it, otherwise um, I have to consume it or invest it, um, otherwise, otherwise it's gone. Now the production function is y equals f of k and l. What does that mean? It means that we only have two inputs in order to produce this good, and that is capital and labour. Now in terms of our production function, it doesn't really help to have it um, sort of in its absolute terms um, at the moment. Reason why, if you think about countries, they're all of different sizes, um, therefore the bigger country is naturally going to produce more output. So what we actually care about is we care about output per capita. Basically, in fancy words, it means divide it by L, make it per labour or per person. Now I'm going to talk you through an example of how to do this. Um, the lecturer I had called it putting into intensive form, so maybe that's what uh, your university has done it as well. So I'm going to show you the example when y is equal to l to the half and k to the half, so that is our production function. So you're going to divide both sides through by l, like I have done so there. Um, then it's just rule of indices really, you've got l to the half and you've obviously got l to the one, we're dividing, so you minus them, which gives us y over l is equal to um, L to the minus a half and K to the half. Um, obviously, that K, L to the minus a half rules of indices just goes onto the bottom and make it positive. Therefore, we have Y over L equals K to the half and L to the half. And then just economics notation, we don't want to write all of that, we're a bit lazy. So once you've done that, you can then put them in little letters once they're over L. So we have little Y equals little K to a half. And that's what it means putting it into intensive form or making it per capita. It's the idea then we can be um, can pair across countries. So our production function is now in terms of um, capital per labour, um, which means we need to care about how the capital stock changes over time. Now, this actually just takes a little bit of thinking about common sense, really. So capital, what can we do? Well, we can invest in capital. And in the solar growth model, investment is equal to savings. And savings is denoted by S, S of K. We save a proportion of our output. So we've got that. That's how our capital stock would grow. Now we need to think about how our capital stock would fall. Well, capital depreciates. Um, if you think about a piece of machinery, uh, basically over time, wear and tear, it's worth less. And we denote depreciation as delta. Therefore, um, it's delta K because delta would be a number 
that is between zero and one. So a fraction of our capital depreciates over time and that would make our capital stock fall. Therefore, our change in um, K is equal to S F of K minus delta K. So even though I said that was what the change in capital is, um, you might see it a little bit differently. You might see it written like this, where the change in K is equal to S F of K minus N plus delta plus G um, K. This is probably the worst form you ever see it in. It's basically when we start to include population growth and technological progress as well, that also depreciates the capital stock. Well, not depreciates the capital stock, but lessens it. So that would be the change in capital. It just depends what's given to you in the question. Okay, moving on. Another thing that's important to talk about is equilibrium, steady state equilibrium. What is that? Well, it's essentially when the country isn't growing or shrinking. Well, in that case, it's when our capital is unchanged, in which case the change in capital is equal to zero. Just let it equal to zero and rearrange it so you get S F of K is equal to N plus delta plus G of K. So as not to overload you with all the theory without putting it into some context, I'm actually going to go through um, sort of a typical exam style question only based on the information that we have learned so far. And then that way I could also do a part two that includes exam style questions on more content within the solo model. So I'm going to quickly show the exam question on the screen, maybe write it down or whatever, and then I will talk you through it. Okay, so for question one, before we can even start answering this question, remember we need things in per capita form or intensive form, and we don't currently have that. So we need to do that, so it's just dividing through L, and then basically using rule of indices to neaten it up. To do all of that, and you get little y is equal to little k to the two thirds. Cool, so once we've done that, we can actually start to calculate the steady state. We know in steady state, the change in k is equal to zero. So in this case, because we only have depreciation and not population growth or technological progress, we know it's when s f of k is equal to delta k. Okay, s we can fill in for, s is 0 0.4, f of k is what y is equal to, and y is equal to k to the two thirds, so we need to put that in there, is equal to, and we know depreciation is 0 0.1 times k. What's the aim of the game here? The aim of the game is to rearrange and find k. So this should just be algebra. I divided the left hand side through by 0 0.1, 0 0.4 divided by 0 0.1 is 4, and I divided the right side through by k to the two thirds. Therefore, I am left with 4 is equal to k to the third because we've got a power of 1 minus two thirds. And then I've gonna um, undo that cube root so I'm going to cube it so k is equal to 4 cubed and that is just 64 therefore k star is equal to 64. So we've nearly finished question one now we just need to illustrate our answer so that means graph it. Okay so we're going to draw our axes we know that on the x-axis is k and on the y-axis is any of the graphs that we're going to include so we're going to include the output the um, function the depreciation line and the investment um, function. So let's start graphing this. I'm going to draw um, f of k first. It is to the power of a fraction, so therefore I know it is um, sort of uh, the curve that I've just drawn. S f of k is just a number times it, so it's just a graph transformation as I showed earlier. And delta k is linear because k is to the power of 1. Now, on this graph, I have to illustrate the k star that I have just found, which is 64, and we know it is when delta k is equal to s f of k, because that is our condition for steady state. Therefore, I look for when they intersect, and I then just draw a point down, and I draw that um, down and put 64, and then I'm also just going to label it as k star. Okay, question two. So I'm going to use the same graph that we just ended on in question one. We have to say that we're starting at an initial capital stock of K0 that is less than K star. So put in anywhere that is less than K star, it doesn't matter where, just pick a point like I have done here. Now draw a line going up and stop when you uh, meet the line that is higher between S F of K and delta K. So obviously you can see here S F of K is greater than delta K, is higher up than delta K. What does that mean? That means we're investing in capital stock more than it's depreciating. So how would the capital stock change? Well, it'd be growing, right? Because we're essentially investing in it um, faster than it is um, depreciating, and depreciating would lower our capital stock. So it means we would grow. So we would continue to grow and grow and grow. As you can see, I've drawn arrows on here. We would grow until we reach steady state. So yes, in this case, we would reach steady state in the long run. 
You could think about this on the flip side. What happens if we were at a point, that initial point that was greater than k star? So draw anywhere on the graph that is greater than k star, so it's to the right of it, and have a look at what happens. Then you can see we've got the opposite happening, right? Delta k is higher up than S f of k, which means we're depreciating faster than we're investing. So our capital stock would fall, which means we would have arrows going to the left, and in which case we would fall um, down until we reach steady state. So in both situations in this case, yes, we would get back into steady state in the long run. So this wasn't the question, but um, I just really want to highlight this point because this is where students go wrong time and time again. And this is on why getting your graph right is really important and why you can't just regurgitate what you've learned in class. So let's quickly change the question and let's say it's y equals k squared and that our um, s f of k is 0 0.2 um, f of k so 0 0.2 k squared and depreciation is 0 0.1 k. Well, let's graph this. It, the graph will now look different, right? Because we've got k to the power that is greater than 1. Therefore, we've got this like, upward sloping curve that looks like the positive side of a quadratic. Again, S of, f of k is just a graph transformation, so it's the same shape, just sort of slightly lower down. And then again, delta k is obviously linear. Um, now, again, we look for steady state, and we know that steady state is where data, delta k is equal to S f of k. So look for where the two lines intersect and just draw a line down. That's our steady state, okay? And we're going to label that k star. It doesn't matter what the number is. We're not figuring out what the number is. I'm doing this just to prove a point to you. Now let's go back to our old scenario. And we're going to have a k0 and a k1. These are initial, initial capital stocks at one point where it's lower and another point where it's higher. Let's start with k0. What's going on here? We can see that depreciation is greater than investment, which means our capital stock is falling. Therefore, um, in this case, in the long run, we don't get back to our um, steady state of K-star. What we'll end up doing is we'll keep falling until we get to our trivial steady state, which is of 0, 0. Let's start with the other scenario of K1. As you can see here, investment is greater than depreciation. What does that mean? That means we'll just keep growing. So we'll keep growing to the right and we, there's no steady state there. So we just continue to grow on infinitely. This is how it's really important. And it was just to show the opposite side of that. So make sure you get your graphs correct. Um, I'm actually going to stop this here. I know there's more to do with solar model in terms of golden rule. I'm going to put that into a different video. This is already long enough and I don't want to scare people. So I hope that makes more sense. And I hope this makes the model, um, yeah, make more sense to you.